Shaman. What's, what's, what's going on, YouTube? Washington. This is what, 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 Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is your boy Jamar for here once again. Now, I'm at a, a different angle in my, what is, I guess it's considered my dining area. Y'all can see my posters back there. Y'all see Benoise, Marijuana, and whatnot <laughs> in my bedroom. But I think, because when I tried to face it towards the window, it was like hella bright and I was giving you silhouette tees and we don't want that. So, <laughs> I'm going to do it from this angle. I don't know. I kind of like this angle a little bit better. It kind of gives you something else to look at in the background. I don't know. Y'all let me know how y'all like about it in the, in, in the description. But, not the description. The comments. <laughs> um, but this is a video for the review of the fourth episode, I believe this is, of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Now, mind you, this episode, there was a lot. There was a whole lot going on. But... It's four o'clock. This bitch, every effing video, she got something to say. But anywho, this a whole lot happened, and <laughs> it was a lot in the best way, honestly. I feel like this might be a long video, because I feel like I have a lot to say. So forgive me if the timestamp, and you looked at it, and you was like, bitch, please. It's going to be worth it, I'm telling you. So, we pretty much pick up exactly where we left off last week when Brandy walked into the, uh, the studio with her ugly-ass husband, Max Lux, or what have you, the, you know, the chipmunk, the one whose uh, dental print goes up like this and the squiggly, like there's some teeth here, some teeth here, then some teeth are missing on the other side. It's, it's that whole situation, but she's just going off and making this whole scene over this man, and I'm just trying to wonder why. <laughs> Anywho... She's yelling and yelling and talking about how would you feel if I left the house and I was in the studio with a bunch of niggas and I didn't wear my ring and all this and forth. And I'm like, I mean, she is making a point. However, a part of me feels like, uh, Brandy, this is so extra. <laughs> like, I understand you're supposed to be mad, but it, I don't know if it's just her personality, but she, it just seems so so extra <laughs> like I, I don't know but I'm just like okay because you know I mean we mind you that love and hip-hop is manufactured in all sorts of different ways but we just gonna sit here and pretend like it's not okay but and, she, and he was talking about man you tripping this that and the fourth I'm just like see this is and you know what this point that I'm about to make now is a point that's gonna be proven later on when I talk about another bitch nigga y'all know who I'm talking about uh he talking about oh well you know you tripping, and I, I didn't sign up for this, and blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, but you cheated in the past, so it's you can't really blame somebody if you're doing shady behavior and you already have a history of cheating, you know? And he's like, well, and she tried to make the point, like, if it was me, you wouldn't be feeling that way, and he probably tried to shrug that off. I'm just like, you know damn well that the shoe was on the other foot, you would be acting the same damn way. But anyways, Kamaya, you know, Fizz's appetizer... <laughs> <laughs> is in this well no she meets with this blogger named Jason Lee <clears throat> now mind you I've never heard of Jason Lee personally he says he's he said if you hear the name or you see me take a picture with Whitney Houston Justin Bieber the 50 Cent and all this stuff I'm like okay I've seen and I've heard of them I've seen pictures of them not you though <laughs> I'm talking about he worked for um what is it, TMZ and The Shade Room and all those? I'm like, I've heard of them, but nobody's ever mentioned your name, but okay. You like talking about, you like Randy saying, oh, I'm Whitney Houston's goddaughter. Like, who? Who are you? <laughs> Anywho. And so Kamaya meets with him, and I can already tell that he is a shady queen. Just from his mannerism, just from how he talks, I'm just like, I know the kind of bitch that you are. <laughs> so... They're talking, and apparently they're good friends, like everybody else on the show. Um, and <laughs> she's, you know, mentioning to him about her problems with Little Fizz and whatnot. And he asks, like, well, how's the sex? <laughs> and he was, she was like, I mean, it would be good if he could keep it up. And I'm just like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Oh, Lord, they all know that 
there's the rumors already talking about how little Fizz is gay. And if he is, how you doing? But either way, but you know, that's been circling around for many, many a decade. Well, not many a decade. When did the big 2K come out? 2000? So about 15 years. <laughs> and the fact that, you know, a girl is talking about he can't get it up. And I'm just like, hmm, I wonder why. But also at the same time, you know, bitches who are bitter just like to go and spread rumors about, you know, their ex levels when they don't wait, when they ain't with them no more. Like, uh... What was it? it was Carly Rae was trying to talk about Benzino had a little ass dick, but I was like, but you was the one that was hopping up and down on that little ass dick. It wasn't a problem then, so why are you trying to talk shit about it now? So it could be that whole situation where she's just trying to talk shit, even though they ain't together no more. <clears throat> but uh, and then of course Jason Lee, just like a queen, was just like, oh bitch, she couldn't get right to the, you know, just lavishing in the tea. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. All right. I mean, I understand a, a bit how Kamaya feels because she's like, well, I didn't have a child to introduce me to. I didn't drag you. I didn't, you know, force you to let me meet your mother. Like, she's kind of confused. Like, okay, we were one way, but now all of a sudden I'm an appetizer. Like, you wouldn't, I guess he's saying you wouldn't do those things to appetizers, but actually nowadays, shit, meeting the family ain't nothing special no more like it used to be, shit. Uh, people bringing one night stands to dinner now. <laughs> I don't know. The, the whole scene has just changed, you know, since, you know, old school days of dating, but either, whatever. So, Hazel Lee meets with Miles, and Hazel is in the studio talking about some no chill, no chill. <sighs> oh, that's how I feel about your song, girl. But, you notice, they always, like, show these artists in the studio making these songs that the only time you hear them is during the time that they record it and during the commercial break when they try to promote it and you never hear it again like Carly's Red song Heartbreaker I think you might think it's they all on YouTube uh I think like that first Jocelyn song that she came out with and now this shit and somebody else said something I can't remember didn't Rashida had something that she was working on that? Why y'all lie like that? That bullshit from last season? So they promote these things for literally 30 seconds and throw it in the dumpster. Just like the rest of the world. But, um... <clears throat> Milan... Not Milan. I'm gonna always get them people mixed up because they both start with M. Miles starts talking about how Milan just doesn't understand his side, his religion, you know, things of that nature. And I'm like, you know what? I get it. I understand the frustration, honestly, like I've mentioned in past reviews, excuse me, on both sides, because when you're raised a certain way, especially if you're raised in a religious way, and somebody tells you, you know, that if you're gay, you're going to hell, and you respect that person, you're going to believe it. You're not going to be, you know, so jumpy to just jump into a situation with somebody in, you know, in a gay open relationship. So, <sighs> But at the same time, I guess when you're in that situation for so long, I guess as, my, as Milan's perspective, it's like, okay, this shit's getting old. Like, if you're just not ready, then maybe we just not meant to be together right now, you know? So it kind of sucks to see Miles go through this because he doesn't seem like a bad dude. He just seems like a guy who's just not as confident in his sexuality like Milan might be. And it's kind of not fair to you know, judge that against him to make him feel like, oh, I just have to be ready now. I get that. And, you know, he's talking about he was a youth pastor in his church and everything. And I'm just like, okay, all right. <laughs> so, and also I'm watching the uh, In Yonda Fix My Life gay pastors uh, thing going on. So I'm like, damn, like, you know, that has to be hard, especially if you're trying to teach something that you know, uh, teach against something that you know is yourself. That has to be a whole internal struggle within of itself. So, and you know, he's sitting here, he's really, he's something really, really sincere. Like he doesn't want to lose Milan, but he's at the same time he's battling with his faith and you know, all the things he's been raised to believe. And I'm just like, damn, I can't imagine. I'm, I'm so glad I was never in that kind of position. I can only imagine like, how do you, you just have to make that decision for yourself. Like, okay, what makes me happy? And what am I willing to sacrifice for that happiness? You know? It, it was a really, it was a really powerful thing. I enjoyed that scene. 
So we get to uh, Fizz talking about he wants to, he's done with Camille and now he wants to go out to the club and party and do whatever. And so he sees Nikki and they try to, you know, reignite this old flame and whatnot. And so I guess they sitting up there talking and Nikki's like, uh, I don't like Camille or I don't know how she heard Camille, but I guess Camille was talking to her, talking about her online, calling her plastic or whatever. And I'm just like, oh, okay, well, so that's how we're going to tie in that whole storyline. <laughs> Next, we get to the part that I really wanted to get into real quick. Because, once again, bitch nigga shit. Ray J and Princess, they're at the house. It looks like they're cooking, even though we know they're really not. They're probably just boiling some water. And Ray J's like, we have to talk. And apparently, he was he had confronted her about being invited to Drake's house for a party that she was invited to by Tierra Marie. First of all, I don't know if I heard that correctly because I'm like, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be completely strange for Tierra Marie to be at a Drake party, but I just can't fathom Drake being like, oh, let me hit up Tierra Marie to invite her to this party, like. <laughs> it just seemed like Drake probably put out a public, you know, invitation. Well, somewhat public invitation. And, you know, Tierra was in the business at one point in time. So she might still have some relationships with somebody who she hasn't beat up. And she probably, that's how she probably got into the party. She could just bring a plus one and that was going to be princess. And so he was like, so what's you doing? What, what's this about you hanging out with Drake and this, that, and the fourth? And princess is like, how the fuck did you know that I was hanging out with Drake? Like, what the hell? And he goes into this whole shit about like, well, no, she rebuttals. It was like, well, you hang out, do what the fuck you want to do. Why can't I go to a party? Like, what the fuck? And so he's like, man, you know, we, we supposed to be on the same page and this, that, and the fourth. And then he just utters the dumbass shit. He's like, well, you do what you want to do. Why can't I leave the house? Why do you want me to stay in the house? And, she, and he's like, because you're, a, because you're not a man, you're a woman. You's a dumb bitch. Not not princess, but Ray J. You's a dumb bitch. Talking about because you, you're a man and you're a woman. So that, that are you saying that that statement somehow makes an excuse for you to go out and act any way the fuck you want to do because you a man? That makes it that makes it okay. The fuck no. And that's why Ray J. You are way too old to be acting like this. Honestly, if I were Brandy, I'd be ashamed. I mean, I know she still loves him, but. <laughs> what you won't do <laughs> is embarrass me. God damn it. Talk about you, I man, you woman. Girl, please. Princess, if you don't get the entire fuck out of this relationship and post haste, talking about I'm not I'm not a man, you're a woman. Ray J, this is why you will forever fail. And like you know what? It's a shame because Ray J is actually talented. He even though because I've heard him sing some acapella songs and I've just heard some of his other music that isn't garbage. And it's actually kind of good. Like, why are you doing this shit? He, not only are you on Love & Hip Hop, but you're on Love & Hip Hop saying ignorant shit. Like, Omarion's on Love & Hip Hop, but Omarion has stayed so far, so far, away from all the ignorant shit. <laughs> so, why? <laughs> why, I ask you? So anyway... Moving on, we got Brandy and her husband. This whole scene was, again, too much. She sitting up there shaking like she about to stab his ass. Like she just going crazy or some shit. And he's trying to figure out like, why are you shaking? What's wrong? What do we need to talk about? And blah, blah, blah. And of course she's like, you know, the damn professional. I hear my husband in the studio with all these females and da 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 I'm just like, you are really putting on for this camera, aren't you, baby? <laughs> and so, they do that whole scene for the promo talking about, you want this ring? You want this ring? And he threw it. And so, she's outside. Now, I'm thinking, after watching this, you know how when you see promos, you kind of have an idea or as to how you think the other person is going to react? I thought she was about to run, tackle his ass, choke him down, do the uh, you know, do the Stone Cold Steve Austin move, um, something. 
She ran crying, talking about something. Go get it. Go get it back. Go pick it up. I can't go. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. You just, you just was all about it, about it, bucking and crazy in the studio, acting like you was about to fight. But then this nigga just threw the ring that I'm sure you paid a good coin on. If you throw that ring, I'm beating the sh out of you. Okay? I don't give a fuck. Okay, did you throw that ring? That means I get to throw all my love and, and affection away from your ass and whoop the shit out of you. <laughs> and then she's out in the street. He trying to bag away. She gonna stand in the front of the car. And she's like, don't do this in front of our neighbors, our neighbors. Bitch, there's a live television camera behind you, hoe. Don't do this in front of our neighbors. Hell, your neighbors got cable TV. They gonna see it anyway, along with 50 other million people who watch this shit. Girl, don't embarrass me in front of the fucking neighbors. Get the... <laughs> <laughs> girl please and so that was just, just so extra and then Fizz meets up with April for lunch and then just coincidentally <laughs> the Jason Lee guy happens to walk up and um, I guess with some friends he's like oh I know that girl and I know them they're cool friends I'll meet up with y'all later like that was not orchestrated Mona if you don't get the fuck <laughs> Anywho, so he comes over and he's just being messy straight from the jump and pretty much is like, you know what? Uh, I, I believe, I don't know if he said that he knew April that well or not, but he was like, so I don't really know you that well, but I'm really good friends with Kamaya and she pretty much said that you have bad sex. Is that true? <laughs> like he's a blogger trying to get the inside scoop and shit. And Fizz was just going off like, man, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, she tripping. If I got good dick, I got good dick. And I'm just like... <laughs> I just don't know how to... I just... I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> but he's just something that being messy. And he's wondering, like, how are you just going to come up here? I don't even know you. Like, this is the first time, allegedly, that Fizz and Jason Lee are meeting each other. And he's just getting all up in his personal business about how good his stroke game is. Like, bitch... If I don't know you, don't be coming up here asking me that kind of shit. Especially about a bitch that I don't like. The fuck? <laughs> so, next we got, um, where are we at? Ooh. Oh, no, I'm good. I thought I'd skip something. I'm trying to look at my damn notes and shit. Uh, Miles and Milan. This was so cute. This is so adorable. So, uh, Miles is talking about how Milan's been ignoring his text messages and calls and whatnot. And then he says, you know, he finally, after he talked to Hazel, after he talked to Hazel Lee about, you know, how he'd he been feeling, I guess he convinced Milan to uh, answer the phone and finally go out with him again. So they met out in a public place and Milan is like, so, no, so you know, what's up? And Miles was like, you know, I know you've been trying to wait for me to, you know, show my affection to you, how I feel about you, and this, that, and the fourth. And uh, I just want to let you know I'm taking the steps to do that. And he was like, oh, so you actually brought me out in public. That's nice. And uh, he was like, you know, I want to take it, you know, a step further. He was like, I thought one way we could do it is to get, like, matching tattoos. And he was like, oh, okay, that would be cute. And he was like, I just want to let you know, I already got it. And Miles was like, oh, my God. I can't believe it. He was giddy. He was giddy. He was so, it was so nice and adorable to see. Um, and then they kissed each other and he was like, you know, you just gave me a kiss in public, right? And I was just like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm like, good for y'all. Good for y'all. Good for y'all. Milan will still be forever and, you know, bae, but I'm gonna let him, you know, I'm gonna let him do this just for his cameras. But behind closed doors, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so Fizz meets up with Nikki and he um, he takes her to this uh, movie theater that he I guess he's invested in or AKA whatever Mona Scott has booked for the scene. And <laughs> she talks about how she wants to book uh, Jason Lee for to promote his uh, or promote her lingerie line, you know, like on the blogs or whatever. Just, you know, hell, publicity is publicity. If he can, he, if he got the connections, she want to use it. I can't blame her for that. <laughs> and, um, but you know, Fizz is like, man, don't trust that man. I just met up with him when I was out with April. He was on some bullshit. And, uh, 
So she was, but she was like, I mean, you know, I keep Fizz's, you know, thoughts and feelings in the back of my mind, but shit, this is still business, baby. <laughs> Which I get. And then they talk about how, you know, Kamaya's been talking shit again on her, about her online and how he wants to get her shit out of uh, his house and stuff. And she was like, well, I can, you know, I can, uh, I can help you do that. You know, I just tell her, you know, take all your shit and don't come back. <coughs> And uh, then they start feeding each other gummy worms and shit and started making out. I'm like, bitch, uh, I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> I was, but uh, let's see. Where are we at, girl? Oh, poor. Oh, oh, I almost missed it. So, see, I'm, about to, I'm, I'm glad I keep reading this shit because I was about to skip over some good shit. So, April Princess... And, uh, no, wait. Oh, okay. April and Princess are walking down the street with some empty-ass shopping bags, and they're talking about, you know, Ray J and Tierra and whatnot, and how she feels kind of set up. Like, wait, every time that I go out with her, Ray J comes to me saying, what are you doing at such and such place? And I'm like... How would he know that I'm in such and such place unless Tierra is the one feeding her this information being messy? And so Princess concocts this plan. She's like, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fake, like I'm going to make a trip to Vegas and I'm going to invite Tierra. And if uh, Ray J comes to me about some Vegas trip, then I'll know that Tierra is feeding him this information. I'm like, ooh, bitch, that's how you get a bitch slipping. <laughs> that's how you get a bitch slipping. <clears throat> and... Um, so the next thing we get to Nikki meets with Jason Lee and, you know, trying to get her business set up about, you know, her laundry line or whatever. And she says, well, I want to involve Hazel Lee on the, on the deal because she used to be a publicist and she can help me with the PR stuff. And Jason was like, um, I'm pretty much familiar with every publicist in Hollywood and I've never heard of Hazel Lee. Hazel Lee was probably like somebody's intern. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is saying Hazel Lee was doing an internship to somebody with no pay. <laughs> That's how you know the Jason. This is this is one of the reasons how you know the Jason Lee is just an old queen. So Hazel Lee uh, comes in and you know Nikki trying to be like you know I hope there's no animosity between us and he was like well shit I she says you're a publicist I ain't never heard of your ass. And she was like, don't be mad at me because I be doing such and such. I be balling just be just because you couldn't get on no real block like TMZ and blah, blah, blah. Once she started going into that, this nigga took a drink and threw it at Hazel E's face. And I was with Nikki. I'm like, bitch, what man throws a drink at a bitch? <laughs> like, who does that? I mean, I guess you don't want to punch her, but... Throwing a drink, though? What? Are we on Basketball Wives? <laughs> like, for real. And she was like, I can't respect that shit. That's all a good reason, because that was some that was some bitch-made shit. <clears throat> so, Amber, y'all know, the one who always be looking at the camera and then always be looking at cameraman number three at the same time, talks to Tierra and Moniz about Miles and the love life and she's talking about how he needs to step up and let me know we gonna move on I'm just like oh, poor baby just just don't know just <laughs> poor baby just has no idea <laughs> and um Tierra brings up the whole situation like oh I was just invited by you know I was talking to my best friend and I was invited by princess to go on this uh this cruise <clears throat> not a cruise this is some trip to Vegas well, guess what? I'm going to tell Ray. You think I should tell Ray about it now? Or should I tell him about him later? And Monique is over there do like, do it now, do it now, do it now. <laughs> oh, you fell right in the trap, bitch. So at least we now know why they were fighting uh, later on in the season. Because Princess was like, oh, caught you, bitch. Wow. <laughs> and lastly, girl. The, the fuck? <laughs> Nikki, Fizz, and Kamaya. So, Nikki is over at Fizz's house, you know, when Kamaya comes over to grab her shit. Ooh! Wait. Ooh, excuse me. And she comes over and she's pretty much like, what the fuck is this bitch doing here? Oh, look at that. Y'all see that light? <laughs> Come on, lighting. Making me look all holy and shit. 
But anyways, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So, um, Kamaya arrives and they talk about some, oh, you can't talk to me like that. And, uh, who the fuck you think you're talking to? And Fizz is like, you better get your shit, get the fuck up out of my house. All this other shit. And I'm just like, why? I'm still not fully understanding why Fizz is upset with Kamaya. Like, the only thing that she really did was might move your furniture around. Like, <laughs> I mean, if that's the case, then I don't know. It just seemed unnecessary for all this animosity. And then, of course, Nikki just instigating, giving the, big, giving the bitch a damn care package. And she <laughs> she's talking about, I'll beat your ass, I'll beat your ass. I would like to see that fight. I really would like to see that fight to see who would win. Because I feel like Nikki might have an advantage because she has, you know, built-in flotation devices here and here. So, you know, you, you might be at a disadvantage, girl, because when you was getting carried out the house, uh, you I wasn't seeing too much going on as far as your shape is concerned. The bitch is beat as far as her face, but everything else just ain't too much with it. <laughs> but that was the review of this episode of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'm about to get taken over by this light because I can see it's already making me dark up. Uh, thanks again so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you like, comment, share, tweet, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video for Bad Girls Club. Bye-bye. Like, share, subscribe. Jamar. Washington. Washington. Washington.